What's up guys, welcome to my kitchen. And what I'd like to do today for you guys is bring you through a day of being on the Earn Your Carbs Lifestyle Challenge. I'm sure many of you guys have seen these ads of me talking about earn your carbs, carb cycling, this, that, blah, blah, blah. Today, what we're gonna do is a live Q&A with all the people that have done this challenge in the past and all the people that have signed up currently in the month of July of 2021. And I say that because you might be watching this a little bit later on. So basically, I want you guys to kind of see some of the questions that I get from just basically anyone out there. Some of the questions that they ask might be questions that you guys have always wanted to know the answer to. So we're gonna go through a little bit of that stuff. You're also gonna see what it's like if you're someone out there who wants to be a fitness entrepreneur and just kind of see what it's like to kind of do things like this, right? So we're gonna be in my home. Um, I'm gonna bring you through the whole rundown of the entire thing. We're gonna learn a bunch of stuff along the way, which is gonna be super cool. And then what I'd like to do is beyond the challenge itself is just kind of break down nutrition for you guys just in general, beyond all the stuff that I'm gonna talk about here, just the main principles that you can take from this YouTube video and just bring it into your life. Like one of the things that I'm really, really passionate about is understanding how to eat with purpose. And what does that mean exactly? It means that every single thing that you eat, you look at it as directions, you know? By the end of the day, all of these little directions, all these little meals that we eat eventually gets us to our destination. So if you can look at every single meal with the idea and the notion that by eating this, it's gonna get me closer to my goals, well then that's what we're gonna learn today through the challenge, through my life, and through some of the principles that I'm gonna show you throughout all this stuff and throughout this video. So we'll see you as soon as this challenge, as soon as this video, as soon as this video starts, we're gonna kick it off. Get it going. First and foremost, welcome. And uh, also welcome to the kitchen. This is, uh, this is where all the magic happens. What is carb cycling? What are we doing here? So basically carb cycling is a scheduled amount of days where we have high carb days and low carb days. Does it matter when I have a high carb day? Does it matter if it's you know right after a big workout? Does it matter if it's on a weekend? Does it matter if it's on a rest day? A lot of people get really confused in this area, but in reality, I really don't care when you have them as long as you have them. A lot of people like to ask me, hey, is it cool if I just don't really have the high carb day? And then I'm like, sure, that's called doing whatever the fuck you wanna do and not listening to what I said, in which case, why buy the challenge at all, right? So. Not to be rude on that, it's just that you really should listen to the way that it is because it will work for you and it has worked for so many people. Just trust the process. The next thing that I really wanna get out there to you guys, I really want you to really understand this concept is the terminology of healthy. A lot of people like to, they, they really wanna know exactly what to eat. What should I eat? I just really want you to tell me what to eat. And I don't, would never wanna do that because then you're stuck trying to make the same meals all the time and that's not sustainable. I don't want you guys to be like, all right, Whenever I wanna get lean, I'm gonna eat this, and I'm gonna eat this, and I'm gonna eat this, and like, it's always gonna get me leaner, and that's, that's, that's all I care about. You need to understand when you measure something, let's just say I measure, uh, I'm just gonna open my fridge for an example. I like just seeing examples. So, just random things, right? So we have egg whites, we have cottage cheese. So, moving on, let's just say, you know, we measure things like this. What's gonna happen is, you're gonna realize after a while, you know, that one brand of cottage cheese that I liked didn't really have the greatest calories for me. But this good brand one is perfect. It has higher protein, it has less sugar, it has less fat. It's gonna get me closer to my goals most likely. When I have egg whites, it's a lot easier for me to get a higher protein content in versus whole eggs. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're gonna to start to realize certain things. Like, a lot of people have a hard time eating a lot of protein, and the reason for that is because they're eating a lot of other things that are making them full, when in reality, they could just switch out whole eggs for egg whites and make it easier to hit their protein. They could have a protein shake and make it easier to hit their protein. So there's small things that happen with every single thing that we eat that I think is so important for you guys. I really want you to understand what it's like to measure your food so that after a while, everything that you see, even if you're out to eat or if you're at home, or if you're at a friend's house, or if you're traveling, you'll just understand exactly what you need to eat all the time. And the more things that you measure, not necessarily time, but the more things that you measure, all the things that you like to eat, you'll be able to put all of these together at any point in time and be able to make a good, solid, rational decision. Another big question that I get at this time is, should we count like things like greens? Like if I put a handful of spinach on my sandwich or something like that, should I count that? No, <laughs> that's like very, very small stuff. Uh, I do think that you should count small stuff like 
you know, you put a decent sized piece of butter on the pan or a decent amount of olive oil on the pan or something like that, that definitely needs to be counted. Things like that are definitely a big deal. In terms of net carbs and full carbs, that's another big question I get. You guys are gonna be counting full carbs. We only do net carbs whenever you're doing something that's on the keto side of things. You guys are not doing that, so it's not valid. All right, those are the big questions that I get right out the gate. So at this point, what I'd really like to do is go over all the questions that you guys have, whether you've been on this challenge before or you're new right now. So remember, there's no stupid question. There's only, it's only stupid if you don't ask a question. All right, so here we go. Have been going through four lockdowns and training alone. Any suggestions for keeping your head in check and keeping showing up with power? That's a good question. I mean, when it comes to motivation, honestly, I think one of the best things that you can do is kind of just like make daily check-ins with yourself. Like, I really think that people who see themselves more throughout the day have a lot more motivation than people who don't. I can't even tell you like how many like really cool studies I've read where like people have like mirrors on their fridge so that, you know, they eat less food because they see themselves and it reminds them, reminds them of their goals. I feel like, you know, a lot of people nowadays, they don't really want to have a mirror in their gym, but maybe you, if you are working out at home, it might be nice to have a mirror like in the area where you're working out. That's just like a small thing that can make a huge difference. Um, I also think that like just making small goals for yourself every single day and writing them down. I think that when you wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you have a sticky note on the mirror. Maybe you have a sticky note on the fridge that says like your goal weight on it. I literally just told my mom to do this like last week on the phone. My mom's like, Ryan, I really wanna lose weight and blah, blah, blah. Um, but you know, we have a great conversation and then she forgets that we had a conversation. <laughs> so I was like, mom, before we hang up the phone, I literally want you to write down your goal body weight and I want you to put that sticky note on the fridge and on the cabinet. And I'm not hanging this phone up until you take a picture and show that you wrote it to me. So we did that together. Those are small things that you, that you can do. Isaac, what does your body need? Why does your body need fats? Oh man, your body needs fats for all sorts of things especially for like lower energy type of stuff, especially for brain power. When you sleep, you burn fat. Um, there's, that's a long conversation, but the reality is that you need fat, especially hormonally speaking. Ali Langley, can you switch out your high carb day on one with a low carb day if you know you have something coming up? Yeah, you can swap those around anytime. As long as you have, I wanna say it's two every eight days, you should be absolutely fine. And you can switch them around. When you guys read the guide, I think you guys are not really reading the guide when it comes to these things. It literally says like, you can put these anytime you want. I don't care. Just make sure you guys have them at some point. Cause in reality, here's what's going on. None of us are losing weight every day. We're all like making gains every single week. Like if we all eat 500 calories less per day for seven days straight, we lose one pound, right? So are you gonna be doing that every single day? Absolutely not. If you're someone who's like, I just did it today. No, that's called water weight or you took a giant shit. So week to week, we're making these changes. So as week to week, you know, we, we need to have a certain amount of calories week to week. It's not really day to day. So what happens is as we have low carbs and then we have high carbs, there's something that's going on inside of us that's making us crave shitty foods less because we're kind of giving ourselves these cheat-esque days. Um, and then when you have this structure, it just keeps you on, it just keeps you on track better. Like I've done, I've done the carb cycling style, the keto cycling style, paleo, zone, intermittent fasting, um, tons and tons of different types of eating styles. And what I did was I, I tried them out first inside my gym. I've, I've owned chalk performance training for seven years in Orange County. And throughout that time, I've had all of these different types of challenges. And nothing's even come close to the results and the sustainability factor, and sustainability is massive. I don't, care, I don't really care what you guys do for that first 30 days, it gives you these amazing results if you can't hang on to it. So this challenge for all of my members was huge. It was groundbreaking, and that was when I decided to put it online. So you guys have never had any of my shitty challenges. You've only had my best one. So with that being said, that's why I think the high days and low days are so important. There's things mentally inside of you that are like, well, I kind of want to have this today, and you'll probably have it on a high day. And if you don't have enough high days, you're probably going to be craving a crazy cheat day, and you're going to just go off the hinges. Can I fast while carb cycling? Absolutely, if you want to. Um, if you're someone who wants to put muscle on, I don't recommend it, because now you have, most people when they want to put muscle on are like, holy shit, this is a lot of food. I don't know if I could eat all this food. And now you're making it even harder on yourself because you're going to fast, and you have to eat all that food in a smaller time window. 
So that's on you. Um, if you're someone who has a really hard time eating, maybe, maybe you're trying to cut and you're like, holy shit, this is not a lot of calories at all. I highly recommend waking up, either having a black coffee or a sparkling water, and then waiting until like one to eat. That would be like your little fasting window. And then you have a smaller window throughout the day. Your first meal will probably make you really full and you're not gonna wanna eat as much. Is that gonna help you? Absolutely, at the end of the day, you're eating less calories. That's the name of the game. So that's the answer to that. <laughs> um, just so you guys know, like intermittent fasting doesn't do shit in terms of like making you younger, making you cooler, or making like, making like you like delete cancer cells, people like to say, stuff like that. Like all, none of that shit's happening until you fast for like two days. Like a 12 hour fasting window, 14, 16, 18, even a 20 hour fasting window, none of that shit's happening. You're welcome to call me out on that. You're welcome to look up all the studies on it. I'm a thousand percent correct. I've even had scientists on my podcast. If you think that that is why you wanna do it, then don't. If you wanna do it in terms of helping you eat less throughout the day, it's great. All right, I'd say I'm gonna hang out for like one more minute uh, just because I send these videos out to people who don't have Facebook, which is a lot of people. Um, and I don't, like to, I don't like them to be over like 20 minutes. So last thing that I will leave you guys with is take your before photo today, hang on to it until the end. At the very end, we're just gonna put them side by side. I'm telling you right now, if you wanna win this money and you feel like you're gonna be one of those people who looks amazing at the end, please, for the love of God, do not do any weird flexing or any weird lighting situations or you're just in a completely different place in general taking the photo. Like, make it legit because once someone does that, it's hard for me to even look at the photo because I'm going to get destroyed on social media for posting it, all right? So make it easy on me. <laughs> just do the right thing in terms of taking your photo. If you want some little like cheat codes, what I, will what I will tell you is to wake up fasted, don't really drink a ton of water, get a bomb ass workout in and just get a nice pump and you know, maybe have a little sweat going and you probably gonna look a hell of a lot better. And that's the most legit way that you can cheat the system on that. But anything else, I got my eyes on you. <laughs> um, all right. Remember guys, throughout the rest of this challenge, throughout the rest of your life, everything, you guys will always have access to this group and I will go in just about every day and kind of go over little questions that you guys ask, ask in the group. So this live Q&A is just for those of you who are here live, bonus factor for you guys. And um, any questions that you guys can think of when this is over, you're like, shit, I wish I asked a question. You can still ask it in the group and I'll get to you guys. Um, yeah, and for those of you who are following the Chalk Formance training app, if you have any questions about programming, go ahead and ask them in the group as well, and I'm happy to get to those. Yeah, all right guys, good luck, and I'll see you in about two weeks. We'll do another live Q&A together. If any of you guys bought the Keto Cycling Guide and you want some questions answered on that, I'm gonna literally be answering questions in that group in about 40 minutes, so 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I'll see you guys there. Again, thanks for hanging out. Great questions and I'll see you guys soon. All right guys, so on top of the carb cycling, earn your carb style challenge, we also have the keto style. So it's the same challenge, except it's just two different ways to get from point A to point B. This one's gonna have a lot less carbohydrates, AKA the keto word in the title. But unlike traditional keto style, what we're gonna do with this one, the one that I've created, is we're gonna have two refeed days in terms of carbohydrates. So instead of just being at 50 grams or less of carbs, which is the real version of keto, we're gonna be that way for five days out of the week. And then the other two days, we're gonna have a higher carbohydrate content. And then on top of that, instead of being like very, very low protein, we're gonna have a higher protein content than any other keto protocol out there. And the reason for that is, I feel like most people, when they do keto style diets, they get really great results for about a month or two, and then they start to get flat. Uh, and the reason that you get flat is because carbohydrates, is, that's what really makes you look full. Like having that big full look that you see a lot of bodybuilders have when they're training, throughout their training, before they're on stage, they just look very full. And that's because of carbohydrate and because of glycogen in their body. So like if we think about just pouring water on my counter, taking a piece of bread, wiping it and seeing it soak it up, that's how our bodies react when we have more carbohydrates. So on the keto side, not having those carbohydrates pulls the water out of us and makes us leaner and drier. So. That's why I have this option as part of my challenge as well. A lot of people like to go this way because they've already done carb cycling. They want to get even leaner. And that's where we do this one. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into some of the questions that people have here. It's gonna be slightly different questions, slightly different answers. Um, so we'll hang out together and then see if you guys learn anything new. All right, let's get it going. So first and foremost, welcome to check-in number one. What I like to do right now is usually go over all the most frequently asked questions that people have. And then as soon as I'm done with that little spiel, you guys kick in and ask me whatever questions you guys have. So whatever questions you may have right now, go ahead and put them in the box below and I'll get to those as soon as this is over. So first and foremost, you guys are probably inside the guide or maybe you've watched some of the course that I just kind of created for you guys. And you might have a question on like your TDE calculations, AKA your total daily energy expenditure calculations. So with that being said, if you have any questions on that, go ahead in the box below and tell me like what your weekly routine looks like. And I can pretty, I can give you a really good estimate of what your TDE should be. One big thing that is different between the keto cycling style and the carb cycling style is essentially the fact that we have way less carbohydrates. And because we have way less carbohydrates, it tends to let our body get rid of a lot more water, AKA make you a little bit more lean and dry looking. So a lot of people are looking for this type of effect and that's why they do the keto style. Now there's one side effect that comes with discreting more water. And what that is, is discreting more electrolytes. So when you get rid of more electrolytes, that's when you get that feeling in your body where you're like, hmm, I think I need carbohydrates. I think I have a headache. I feel kind of brain foggy. Something's wrong. Maybe this isn't for me. All these negative thoughts, most likely because you don't have enough electrolytes. If you guys think about me just like taking my water right now and just pouring it on my counter and I take a piece of bread and I just like wipe it in that water, all of a sudden that bread's gonna get soaked up. And that's basically what carbohydrates are like inside your body. And that's why a lot of bodybuilders consume a lot more carbohydrates because their muscles soak it up and it makes them big and fluffy and look really cool. But then when it comes time to get on stage and show everybody how lean they are, they always switch to a low carbohydrate diet and they get more of that dry look. So that's kind of why we do this. Um, second is for those of you out there who have kind of hectic schedules and you really like just the easiness of just putting your carbohydrates right after your workout and the rest of the day is fats and proteins and it's super easy, this works really well as well. Um, at any point, if you guys feel like you want to get back into bulking, you're kind of over cutting uh, or you want to maintain, it's, it's really not going to make a difference if you maintain on this diet or you maintain on the carb cycling style. But if you want to bulk, you for sure need more carbohydrates. Your body's going to need those carbohydrates to build muscle. And this is primarily best for maintaining and cutting. One other big question that people ask me, are we counting net carbs or total carbs? We're going to be counting net carbs on this. That's going to push you to eat more fibrous foods. And when you're eating more fibrous foods, you're going to get more full. So when people have less carbohydrates, they do tend to be more hungry than people who have higher carbohydrate diets. And because of that, we like to implement more fiber, fibrous dense foods to keep you more full. So if you feel like you're hungry all the time, you feel like you need more carbohydrates, try using more fibrous carbohydrates in your diet. The more fiber, the better. All right, next is in terms of splitting your carbohydrates, people are gonna ask, well, can I have this carbs here? Can I have these carbs here? Um, I don't really care where you put them. Honestly, it really doesn't matter. Like whatever your carbs are for the day, you can put them all before your workout. You can put them all after your workout. You can split half before your workout, half after your workout. If you work out twice a day, you can take 50 grams and you can split it any way you want before and after throughout the day. If you want to implement intermittent fasting, a lot of people like to implement intermittent fasting. It's, it's definitely an added benefit for those of you who are hungry all the time. If you're hungry all the time and you have a smaller window to eat, it's gonna be easier for you to eat less calories. Now, what do you do when you are hungry? You eat something that kind of, uh, what, 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 what do I wanna call this? It like curbs your hunger. There's a better word for that, but I'm not thinking of it right now. It makes you not wanna eat, right? So that would be something like coffee. That'd be something like um, sparkling water. These are things that will definitely make you feel full even though you haven't really consumed any calories. So black coffee, sparkling water. I'm a big fan of like Perrier, Pellegrino, Topo Chico, all those things. Those things are awesome. You can drink that first thing in the morning and I guarantee it helps you not feel nearly as hungry. But if you're also someone who likes to eat breakfast right in the morning, that's totally cool too. It's really not gonna make a difference. The most important thing is eating the amount of calories that are prescribed to you in this guide 
from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. So if you have to eat 2,500 calories and it's 100 grams of fat, 100 grams of protein, 100 grams of carbs, then it doesn't matter if you eat all that in one meal, if you eat all that in 10 meals, as long as you get it in a 24 hour window, you're good to go. Sometimes I get firefighters, police officers, they're like, hey, I have this weird schedule and this and that. Just make sure you hit your numbers in a 24 hour period. And we'll restart again on the next 24 hour period. So timing, not gonna make a big difference. All right, I think that's probably the most that I want to really wanna talk about that's most frequently asked question stuff. Let's get into the question that you guys have here. Uh, FBA best for cutting. Best for cutting is gonna be any of the programs that you think is gonna get you excited every day to train. I don't care if that's FBA, I don't care if it's strength conditioning, I don't care if it's sweat program. If you're consistent with it and you're gonna do really well and you're gonna stay in check on your diet, it's gonna work for you. In terms of aesthetics, the way that you look at the end of a month, at the end of a training cycle in general, I don't think there's really anything out there that's gonna be better than the full body aesthetics program. The strength conditioning program is awesome if you are very skilled, like you already know how to lift, you already have really good lifting numbers for your cleans and your squats and your presses and all that stuff, and you can hit a Metcon really fucking hard. If you're someone who's like learning some of those movements and you're hitting the Metcons with like medium effort because you're not really that skilled yet there, that's not gonna be the best program for you. The best program for you is gonna be the bodybuilding program because you can hit every movement because there's not a huge learning curve behind the movements um, and you can hit it with the most intensity. That's probably gonna be the best for you. Is it okay to mix the programs? Absolutely it is. I'll go over a couple different scenarios and maybe that'll answer all the other scenarios that you may have. So we have an Olympic lifting program for instance um, and we have the strength conditioning program. <clears throat> so now if you're following one of these programs, the very first thing you're gonna see is an important lift. So for strength conditioning, we always have a lifting section and then we have a conditioning section. Unless it's cardio day, it's just all cardio. But on the days where we have lifting and we have a Metcon, AKA metabolic conditioning, so it's a short conditioning piece. And then you're gonna follow something like the full body program. You wanna make sure that you're not overlapping strength movements. So when you go to the full body program, there's like one or two lifts for the day that are the main main piece, and then there's the accessory pieces. You can't follow the squat program on strength conditioning program, and then follow the squat program on full body aesthetics program. That's, that's two programs, that's not okay. You have to follow one program. So if you're gonna do the two of them, you would do all the bodybuilding stuff, and then you would do the conditioning piece either later on in the day, or on a day that you're not doing FBA. I always recommend doing like three to four days of the full body aesthetics program and then like one to two days of strength conditioning or sweat. And then when you, the sweat, sweat's great because there's no lifting in it. It's just big conditioning workout. So you really, you're really not gonna overlap anything. If you wanna do like Olympic lifting, for instance, you would just put the Olympic lifting piece in front of the strength conditioning workouts, take out the main lift for strength conditioning and just do the Metcon. So you would do the Oli workout and then you do the Metcon for the day on strength conditioning. That's the way that you do that. All that matters is that you're not doing strength sections multiple times. Cannot overlap the strength sections. We went over the electrolytes. We went over why you need to consume more electrolytes. If you don't know a way that you can get more electrolytes in, you can just simply put salt in your water in the day, in the morning, a little bit of lime. That'll make a big difference. But it's better if you have some sort of a supplemental um, electrolyte complex that you can just kind of like put in your water some sort of a powder, like a supplement type of deal, or you can just buy like Smart Water. Smart Water is a great, very inexpensive way to get your electrolytes in as well. We went over the fact that if you do want to bulk, you definitely want to have more carbohydrates, so this is not going to be the diet for you on that. Um, I do think it's very important for all of you guys to be measuring your food for at least a solid week. Uh, and for those of you who love a lot of variety in your diet, I, I recommend that you guys measure for potentially like two or three weeks. And if I was to give you exactly what to eat every single day, that wouldn't really sustain you for that long anyway. You'd be like, cool, I'm gonna eat this until I get to a certain point, and then you get there, and then you don't wanna eat that anymore. So you start eating different foods, but you don't know how much to eat of it. So all of a sudden, you're straight back to where you started. Just being told what to do is not gonna be enough. You need to know why. The who, what, where, when, why is so important right now, all right? So just remember that. Like, if, if it was that easy, then, you know, Nobody would really look good. Nobody would be trying to look better. Everybody just looks the same. So very important for you guys to just learn these small, very simple things. One thing I'd like to really, really just like get out there to you guys is 
The carb cycling stuff that I do on the Earn Your Carbs Challenge is one way of many ways that you guys can change your body. So I know a lot of you guys out there right now are like, what about intermittent fasting? What about eating paleo? What about eating zone? What about carb cycling? What about this? What about that? What if I do this crazy ass shit that I saw on YouTube or on Instagram and we're like, my friend told me to do this. Here's the thing. Being in a calorie deficit is what makes you lose body fat. It makes you lose weight. So if you're someone who just wants to lose weight, you're pretty big and you just want to lose weight, you want to be smaller, being in a calorie deficit is where it's at. For those of you out there who have a lot of muscle mass and you want to get lean, you want to get shredded, you're going to have to keep your protein high and you're going to have to eat your calories less. At the end of the day, you still need to be in a deficit just like everybody else on every other diet. So now you're like, well, why are you selling this? Because here's the thing. I've owned Chalk Performance Training, those of you guys who know that, in Orange County, California for seven years. All of the people in my gym since I started on day one were like, Ryan, can we do a nutrition challenge? Like, we wanna do a challenge. So I would come up with different challenges. I would take whatever was popular at the time and we would do that. Um, and I would see the results. Cause I'd give people prize money, I would coach them along the way. And once I did this one, this is the one that kind of like left the biggest impact. So I was like, well, you know, I'll post the photos online, people can see, maybe it'll get me more members to my gym. And instead, it, what it started to happen was like people reaching out to me from different countries, different states. They're like, can I do it? I wanna do the challenge too. And that's kind of how it went online. And then all of a sudden now it's, for those of you who know, this challenge is probably one of the biggest challenges on so social media. Like this is just not a regular YouTube video. <laughs> like I'm someone who literally creates some of the biggest nutrition challenges in the world. So with that being said, the reason I put this one online is because it left the best results. Results to me is defined by something that you can sustain for a long time. So having a quick fix is great, but being able to hang on to it is better. What I think is really cool about this is I give you a certain amount of fats, proteins, and carbs per day, and you just have to hit those numbers. Throughout the process of when people sign up for this, I kind of it looks like a almost like a training course. There's certain videos that you watch, and it's me showing you how to calculate calories on MyFitnessPal and track your food. Um, it shows me explaining the difference between healthy eating and just eating in general because there really is no such thing as healthy in my eyes. There's only overeating or undereating. And I basically show the difference between all of them. So at the end of the day, I basically tell everybody, hey, take your fats, take your proteins, eat them whenever you want, but take the carbohydrates and eat them before you work out and after your workout, AKA the earn your carbs style. So what that does is you have your carb number, you put it before and after your workout, you bang that number out, you're done for the day. Now everything else that you do is fats and proteins. So now if you're out with your friends, if you're out traveling, you're out doing stuff, it just makes it easier. Like when you're out and you're ordering something and you're not making it at home, you're like, well, I'm not gonna have the bread, I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna eat this, AKA eating with purpose, right? Getting my directions for the day. And it just, it just makes the process a lot easier. And I think that's why it did so well and it continues to do so well because people take these principles and they just run with them. I want you guys to know that there's a million ways to get from point A to point B. It's just Whatever works best for you. You're gonna hear that a lot throughout your fitness journey, throughout your nutrition journey. Like anything when it comes to weightlifting, anything when it comes to nutrition, you're always gonna hear that everybody's different and they're right. You're always gonna hear of coaches being coached by other people because they're bored of their own stuff and they wanna try someone else's stuff. And I think it's important for everyone to try multiple different things throughout their journey to find out which one is better. Even people in my own gym, I'm like, you should try another gym <laughs> just so you understand how cool it is here. You know what I mean? Like, and people who are at a gym right now, they think it's the coolest gym in the world. You should try another gym because there might be a cooler one. These are small things that make a huge, huge difference. Um, I, can't even, I can't even convey to you guys how much my training has changed, how much my nutrition has changed, how, look, how much my outlook on nutrition and fitness has changed like throughout the years. And like every small change that I've done and I've had has made a monumental change sustainability of whatever I'm trying to do at the time. So I'm always trying to look good. I've been, I'm gonna sell fitness programs and nutrition programs for the rest of my life. If I don't look good, I'm gonna be broke, right? <laughs> that's, that, that, that's part of it. For those of you out there who are trying to make a huge lifestyle change, whether it's fitness related, workout related, that's probably the mindset that you're gonna want. You're gonna wanna think about something that's active in addition to thinking about the directions that you have for your food, right? and getting to that end goal every single day, eating with purpose, as I like to say. If you can put all these things together, you can really like be excited about something every day, even if it's not going to the gym, it's going surfing, it's going for a hike, it's whatever. Getting excited about something, understanding how to eat with purpose, that's what's gonna change your body more than anything. 
So one thing I want you guys to know, if you're a fitness entrepreneur in the space, you're not someone looking to change your body right now, you're just like, I wanna see what Ryan does and how he does it and all that. This is one small way that you can provide a giant amount of value to your people. Having a live Q&A and giving someone your time is huge, but you can't obviously give your time all the time because then you're like a personal trainer. And everybody's main goal is to get out of the gym and out of personal training because you can only charge someone so much money per hour and then eventually your time is gone. So your goal is to tra train more people for less money, but more people at the same time so you can increase your hourly rate. So your goal is to do stuff like this where you can talk to a giant amount of people, you can help a lot of people. You have to make sure you have a great product, right? I didn't even know I had a great product for years. I was building on these things for a long time until I even got to this place. So if you're someone who's trying to rush it, don't, because <laughs> the last thing you want to do is put a bad product out there. But once you get to this place, it's cool because then you can really make a huge impact. And when you're on social media, you start getting tagged all over the place. People are really, really thankful for your programs. It just makes a huge, huge, just dent in the fitness industry. It's great. Um, and then also there's tons of other places that you can go with this. Once you start to do really well and people see that what you have is legit and it really worked for them and they start talking about it, you can start building on other things. You can start building on nutrition programs that you implement inside of the challenge and then get people to hopefully sign up for those programs as well. You can start building a really good business just like that. I like to tell people right now like, What's the first step? What do I do? I want to get into fitness right now. I really want this to be my life. How do I start to get clients? And the first thing that you're going to get from a $15,000 business course person, not because I've ever paid for them, but I have friends who, who do these courses. The first thing they tell them is to reach out in cold, cold DMs. So all the followers that you have, just reach out to them and ask them if they want help with anything. Ask if they can help you with some of your new programs that you want to try. See if they can try it and see if they can get some results and maybe you do a couple people for free and you start building on that. And you can start building a great clientele like that. A lot of people do it all the time. There's uh, the entrepreneur side of it. There's the, there's the uh, nutrition side of it for those of you out there who want that part of it. And um, if you guys ever have any questions about any of this stuff, or you wanna see videos on more detailed stuff like this, put them in the comments below. I'd love to get to them. If you guys have any, any other questions a little bit more personal, reach out to me on Instagram, Ryan Fish, R-Y-A-N-F-I-S-C-H. Thanks for hanging out in the kitchen. And I'm gonna show you guys a lot of other things that kind of go on throughout my day as well. This is a very, very small piece. <laughs> the biggest piece that I do and the most important piece that I do is my programming, all the training programs that I make for everybody. That is by far my most important thing and the biggest thing that I have. And I'm gonna be really excited to show you guys what that's like every single day for me as well. So again, thanks for hanging out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I wanna make sure that I'm giving a lot of content for everyone out there who wants to change their body. And I also wanna give a lot of content for those of you out there who are trying to be fitness entrepreneurs in this space. So again, thanks for hanging out.